Hey there, Nick Dunitakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over improving the user experience when using a site-wide progress indicator like Top Bar, but this technically applies to anything else as well. So if you've never heard this term before, if I reload the page, take a look here at the top of the page where we can see a progress bar that is loading left to right, and I'll just reload again just so you can take a look here. Uh, I'm pretty sure you may have noticed this on other popular sites like GitHub and YouTube where they do something very similar. For example, if I jump around here on GitHub's UI, we can see a very subtle blue line that comes across here uh, as the page is loading. And if your web framework or your website is either a single page app, or if it's like GitHub, we're using something like PJAX, or you happen to be using Turbolinks or Hotwire Turbo or HTMX or Phoenix Live View or anything similar to that, you can have this idea of creating a site-wide progress indicator because you don't need to reload the entire page between transitions and you can show something awesome like a little progress bar just so the user knows that something is happening. And what's interesting is when it comes to top bar, it is lacking in one feature, at least at the time of making this video, where in my opinion, at least, when you have sites using something like top bar, they can actually end up feeling slower than they really are due to, I don't want to say like an optical illusion, but due to how we as human beings perceive progress bars. And we're definitely going to look at some before and afters here. We're going to look at a Phoenix Live View app just because it happens to be using Top Bar by default. But again, this applies to any web framework and uh, we're going to see how to modify Top Bar to make it potentially a little bit nicer. I say potentially because, you know, maybe this is subjective to some degree. I don't think it is. I think this is going to be a very easy before and after win. You'll be able to clone down the repo and check it out on your own in case it doesn't come across on video. But what's really interesting, and, and before we jump into the before and after in code, is if you happen to be using something like Hotwire Turbo, which uh, I really do like, by the way, I, I use this in all of the uh, web apps that I've been making recently here, is, you know, specifically, um, or I should say, it's not specific to using Rails. It also works with, you know, any backend that you like. It could be using Flask, Phoenix, even, it, it doesn't really matter. But they use their own progress bar that's unrelated to top bar. And yeah, there's a really nice feature here where it will not show the bar unless the response takes longer than 500 milliseconds. This way, when you have a very fast response, like, you know, let's say that you have a really good internet connection and the server happens to be close to you and you ping like 20 milliseconds to it and the server responds in, I don't know, 150 milliseconds, and then, you know, this bar is not going to show because, you know, let's just round it up and say your response took 200 uh, milliseconds to get back. But, you know, if you're on a more spotty internet connection where it's going to be very useful to see, you know, some visual indicator that something's happening, then it will show for things that take longer than 500 milliseconds. So. In this video, we're going to look at a, an example Phoenix application using Topbar, which is open source, and we will show how to modify Topbar so that you can add this delay without having to fork Topbar. And uh, interestingly enough, I actually uh, brought this up on IRC recently, a couple of days ago, at least before making this video here. And I spoke to Jose Valim, the creator of Elixir, and you know, I asked him if it would be possible to add this very same feature that Hotwire Turbo has for adding a delay to live view. And, you know, we talked it over on IRC and it turns out we can actually do this without modifying live view at all, or even forking top bar. Although it's technically, you know, um, hopefully in the future, maybe top bar can have this feature to avoid having to write this custom code uh, that we had to do to get this to work. And when I say we, like I brought up the problem, he actually created this solution here. You know, I informally reviewed it, whatever. And now he pushed that up into the installation docs for live view. I don't know if that's live yet. So, you know, by the time you watch this video, maybe this code snippet is in the docs, but understand that at the time of making this video, you know, that didn't exist. So here we are. And uh, yeah, I think now let's just start looking at some before and afters because I think it is going to make a lot more sense just to, to see how things are. So what I ended up doing here is I just have a Phoenix application up and running and I'll leave a link to this in the description. I have an open source a dockerized Phoenix app as well as other web frameworks and you can clone this down and check it out. And by the time you watch this video, the patch that we're going to implement live in this video will be up on the repo so you'll be good to go. So what I ended up doing here is I just created a very, very basic site here where we transitioned between two different pages using Live View. And you can see here I'm in localhost, uh, you know, whatever, colon 8000 slash one. So we have like one page, like page one, and we can now transition to page two. And we can transition to page one and back to two. Basically, these are just live patch links so that transition between two pages. But notice at the very top of the page here, there is that little progress bar that is going left to right when I click that. And we can see a little light blue one, right? There it is. There it is again. And... You know, this response is happening over a local network. Uh, the actual response from the server is probably something ridiculous, like in the orders of microseconds or, you know, uh, even less, like, you know, 133 microseconds to get a socket connection there. Like, this is so ridiculously fast, like, it's ridiculous, right? Like, and, you know, that's partly because 
Live View and Phoenix and Elixir are very fast, and but I mean, you know, you can get sub millisecond response times using, using Flask as well. But the idea here is, you know, if I click this like super super fast, like for whatever reason, I don't know if if it's like this for you, but my brain is so so trained to look at a tr at a progress bar to see when something is done. So when I click this link and I see that progress bar happening, I actually follow the progress bar kind of with my eyes and like. My brain doesn't think that the page is loaded until the progress bar is done. But like if you very carefully look at this link, when I click this link, it will change to page one because that's the page is transitioning to well before that animation finishes. So here we go. I'm going to click it in three, two, one, click. Like this one appears way before the animation finishes. It's going to be very hard to see on video, but if you clone down the repo and try it out, then um, I'm sure you're going to see the difference. Even if you have something like a 60 hertz monitor, um, yeah, it's extremely noticeable. and. That's the illusion. That that's the issue there. So seeing this progress bar, when you have a very fast connection, it kind of makes you feel like the page is loading slower. So that is the problem or the use case that uh, I would like to solve here. And we're going to solve this one by only showing that progress bar for requests or responses that happen uh, in over half a second. Although you'll be able to change that number to be whatever you'd like. So now let's take a look here at some code to get this all to work here. And I do have that set up here. Um, so if you clone on the repo, this is uh, the code that we're looking at here. And if I go to the app.js file, which is where our JavaScript is, this is, uh, at least at the time of making this video, what you get out of the box, basically, when you set up a brand new Phoenix Live View application. So we can see that we have top bar here. It's also, you know, a dependency in the package JSON file. It's just, uh, you know, an NPM package that you install. Then you import it. Then you can configure it using certain things that you might want. You know, the color of it, for example, you can choose to be stuff or, or you know, you can choose to use a different color if you'd like. And then uh, this is Phoenix and Elixir specific, but if you're using something else like HTMX or maybe for whatever reason you want to use top bar with Hotwire Turbo, uh, all of these solutions, they give you access to certain events like loading start or loading stop. In Phoenix's case, for HTMX, they're named differently. For Hotwire Turbo, they're also named differently. But the idea here is that, you know, we can do something when that event happens. So like when a page transition starts, we can show the top bar. And when it's done, we can hide the top bar. Very similar things apply to whatever tech stack or library that you're deciding to use on the front end or back end, whatever you want, right? And this is the situation now. It's like, well, we have this, but uh, top bar doesn't give us a config option to add a delay. So how do we add a delay? And uh, I'm actually going to paste some code that I have off screen here into here. And then we'll just go over it a little bit. Uh, the code itself really isn't that important. Uh, well, I mean, it's important in, in the sense that you're going to need to add it to your application unless top bar happens to get uh, modified in such a way. Um, maybe maybe someone can open up a pull request there. I don't even know if it's still maintained, uh, whatever. Um, but here we are. So we had those uh, event listeners, the same ones as before. But now instead of just doing a top bar show and a top bar hide, we're actually introducing uh, basically a wrapper around that to wait some amount of seconds, like in this case, 500 milliseconds. And we just do a set timeout and then show it um, yeah, if it's already not defined here. So, and then we're using clear timeout basically to get rid of that. I, I don't want to spend like the next 20 minutes going over this JavaScript code because uh, I guess technically we don't need to understand it that much other than that we have this one variable here like top bar scheduled, you know, is it currently running or not? Nope, so let's just set it to be undefined by default. And then uh, when page loading starts, then uh, if it is undefined, then it is going to do the set timeout there, wait 500 milliseconds, show the top bar, and there, there uh, it's going to populate this variable. That's why we can't use const there because it changes. And then, um, yeah, when page stops, we basically just clear that timeout and then redefine it back to undefined and we're kind of just like starting again. Um, but now that I have this here, and I'm gonna save that and go back to the page. Let me uh, start clicking around here, but you can see, Check it out. There's no progress bar now. Why? Because I'm on a local network that's finishing way faster than 500 milliseconds. And we'll go over how we can emulate a slower network to see it. But doesn't doesn't this feel a lot faster now for you? At least it does to me. Like the progress bar isn't there. So like my eyes are super laser focused on, you know, where I'm clicking because, you know, if you're a normal human being and not like a lizard, you're probably going to be looking at what you're clicking, right? With, with Like I'm looking at my mouse cursor. You can see my eyes are moving. So I'm, I'm here. Ah, it, it just feels like ridiculously fast. I'm clicking like as fast as I can, right? It, it, yeah, this just feels faster. And maybe to do a quick before and after, let me undo the change back to here. And then uh, we can see again, like I'm still clicking fast. We can see the progress are going, going crazy, but yeah, this just feels slower because of the progress bar. But anyways, yeah, that is um, all you have to do here to get something like top bar to be 
uh, delayed if it doesn't have that feature by default. And if you're not using tap bar and you're using something else, like end progress is another one that's like very popular, exactly same strategy applies. Like instead of running a tap bar show, you can just run and progress like show or I don't know what, you know, function uh, names they have. And then you can just do like end progress hide here. But this like tooling or uh, wrappers around this, like to set the timeout and clear the timeout, it, it all stays the same. You know, maybe you would technically rename the variable to be like end progress scheduled instead of top bar. But uh, yeah, it's completely independent of what library you use. Now, I hope one day that uh, this does become a feature of top bar, but let's just make sure that uh, our progress bar still does work. Because if we go back to here and start clicking around, notice that we don't see it at all. But let's say that um, someone has a poor internet connection, like maybe, you know, they're on some mobile connection or, you know, maybe they just live in uh, Mongolia or something like that. And they're accessing a server somewhere in the US and they have like a 250 millisecond ping time and it takes like, 250 milliseconds to get a response. And before you know, let's just say that we're in a situation where it's over 500 milliseconds. So what we could do here is open up the console. And this is a feature of Live View where I can just paste in uh, enable latency simulator. And let's just say, you know, let's give ourselves 750 milliseconds of latency here. And if I do that, and now I start clicking around uh, these links here, it's like waiting, waiting, waiting. Oop, there's the progress bar and we're done. So like we're able to emulate the behavior of uh, you know, someone who has a spotty internet connection or just what happens when things take longer than uh, they should. And, you know, this is like very specific to, to live view because it's using WebSockets even to make these page transitions here. You know, that's really important when you're using something like uh, WebSockets here because, yeah, it, it's very, uh, I don't know how to say this, like, it is very possible to see this progress bar even when little blips occur. So like when you're using something that's stateless, like, like HTTP, you know, once this page is loaded, like, the response is done, the world is uh, thrown away, and you know now you're just sitting on the page, but with a WebSocket connection, that connection is live. And let me just give you uh, an idea of what I mean here. You know, If I actually cl close out the server here and go back, um, yeah, eventually the socket is gonna time out there and we can see the progress bar. Progress bar is like, yo, trying to connect, trying to connect, trying to connect, but I can't, the server isn't there, the server isn't there. But then if I go back here and uh, up it, then this is going to uh, reconnect eventually here like these failures will stop and then boom, it just got remounted and now we're back in business. So yeah, that is very nice. But that's basically it for this video. Uh, I'll leave some links to certain things that we talked about in the description if you want to check them out. I still do think like Top Bar is one of the best uh, site-wide indicators here if you happen to be using a JavaScript solution like this one. Um, yeah, who knows? Maybe it'll change in the future to where we can config configure all this stuff at the library level. It would be cool if we just had a property called like show delayed and then like 500 milliseconds and you can just pop in whatever you want and then you don't have to have all this stuff wrapping around but uh on that note thanks a lot for watching this video if you have any questions about any of this let me know in the comments below also would be kind of curious to see like you know are you using hotwire turbo are you using live view htmx etc it's always interesting and uh, if you want to see more videos like this let me know too in the comments below if you like the video please give it a thumbs up thanks a lot for watching and i will see you in the next video